Shalom, this is Tony Robinson of Restoration of Torah Ministries, and we're going to uh, continue our teaching on resurrection in the Torah. The, this message is entitled, How the Prophets and the Sages of Israel Understood Resurrection. How the Prophets and Sages of Israel Understood uh, Resurrection. And you're going to see why I say the prophets and the sages. So let's start off uh, by looking at uh, who were the 120 men of the Great Assembly? Who were they? Um, these were a panel of about 120 prophets and sages that included Ezra, Nehemiah, Mordecai, Daniel, Simeon the Righteous, and the prophets Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. They constituted the ultimate religious authority at the onset of the Second Temple area in the 4th century BCE. Okay, so the, what I want you to remember from this is uh, who they were and the time frame they op operated in. We're talking the 4th century BCE, and we see that it in, these 120 men included Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi, uh, three of uh, the prophets that Adonai used to uh, speak to Israel. So what did these men do? Among their accomplishments was the composition of the text of our standard prayers and blessings known as the Shimona Esra or the Amidah. Should have an H on the end there. What is the Amidah or the Shimona Esra? It's a series of 18 prayers that's prayed uh, three times a day by devout Jews. Again, I want you to note the time frame of the 4th century BCE. This is how long uh, these prayers have been prayed since about that time when they were formulated by the men of the 100 and uh, by the 120 men of the Great Assembly. And again, as I said, it included Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. So these are no uh, spiritual neophytes. They're not lightweights. These are the heavyweights. So what I want to do uh, in order to see, to see how the prophets, that's why I said uh, we're going to understand uh, how the prophets thought about resurrection. We're also going to understand how the sages, because the other 120 men, they included some of uh, uh, lesser prophets that weren't uh, as well known as Zechariah and Malachi and Haggai, but it also included many of the wise sages of Israel. But we're going to look at the prayer that they penned, and we're going to gain insight into their thoughts on resurrection. So what I want to do is I want to look at the significance of the second blessing of the 18. I'll read it for you. You are eternally mighty, my Lord. The resuscitator of the dead are you, abundantly able to save, who makes the wind to blow and who makes the rain descend, who sustains the living with kindness, resuscitates the dead with abundant mercy, supports the fallen, heals the sick, releases the confined, and maintains his faith to those asleep in the dust. Who is like you, O master of mighty deeds, and who is comparable to you, O king, who causes death and restores life and makes salvation sprout? And you are faithful to resuscitate the dead. Barukata Adonai, or blessed are you, who resuscitates the dead. Now that's the second blessing of the Amidah or the Shimona Esra. Now I want you to look through this. And I'm pretty sure you can already guess what the major theme is. You can just see the words in the red there. They all have to do about the resurrection of the dead. Except for this one phrase here which, which says, make salvation sprout. So let's just kind of, let's uh, go to the next slide and see what we can find out. The dominant theme of this prayer is Adonai's ability to resuscitate, revive, or resurrect the dead. Okay, this prayer mentions resuscitating the dead or resurrection specifically four times, okay? Now, what does restore life mean? That was one of the phrases that he restores life. Obviously, it is resurrection. He's the one who restores life to the dead. Well, what does it mean to maintain his faith to those asleep in the dust? What does that mean? It's the same concept that he is the one who will maintain his faith to resurrect the dead. And so now we get to that one phrase, what does salvation sprout? That he makes salvation sprout mean? It means resurrection. 
In other words, we see that Haggai, Malachi, Zechariah, as well as the other sages who helped pen the Shemona Esra or the Amidah, in the second prayer we have concrete evidence that they saw the sprouting of vegetation as resurrection. And clearly, they have understood the Torah's language of resurrection, even as we saw in Genesis chapter 1, verse 9 through 13. So how did, let's look and see how Isaiah talked about resurrection in Isaiah 26, 19. But your dead will live, their bodies will rise. So clearly we're talking about resurrection. You who dwell in the dust, wake up and shout for joy. Your dew is like the dew of the morning. The earth will give birth to her dead. That was the New King James Version. Now let's look at the Art Scroll Tanakh Version of Isaiah 26, 19. May your dead come to life. May my corpses arise. Awake and shout for joy, you who rest in the dirt. For your dew is like the dew that revives vegetation. And so the translators of the Art Scroll Humash, they have a slightly different translation of the last part where it says revive. We see this in brackets. So we know that that was added to the text. That word was not in the Hebrew. But the fact remains that when they translated this, they understood that resurrection was like the dew that revives vegetation. So clearly Isaiah has seen the connection between revival of vegetation and resurrection. Furthermore, <clears throat> this is the same theme, <clears throat> excuse me, in the second prayer of the Amidah. And it talks about he who makes salvation sprout. And so here's a direct linkage between making salvation sprout and Isaiah 26, 19, again, confirming their understanding of resurrection. So what have we learned? We've learned that the 120 men of the Great Assembly included the prophets Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi, that they were the ones that uh, wrote the Amidah, they began that, they began that process. They understood resurrection within the context of vegetative growth as taught by the Torah. Our understanding of resurrection as seen in vegetative growth is therefore firm and sure. We are not adding to the text, but we are simply seeing in Genesis 1, 9 through 13, what holy men of God have seen through the centuries. And lastly, the views of the 120 men of the Great Assembly were clearly formed by the Torah. I hope this has been informative to you and I hope you continue with us. May Adonai bless you in the name of Yeshua.